everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another brioche knitting tutorial for you. So as I mentioned in my last tutorial, this summer has kind of turned into the summer of brioche for me. So first I put out my Skillshare video showing you the basics of brioche. So if you're curious about that one, I'll be sure to link it down below. In that video tutorial, I take you through step-by-step step how to create your first brioche project, which in this case is a brioche infinity scarf knit out of bulky weight yarn. And if you are interested in trying that one, if you use my link down below, you can get a month free trial of Skillshare, so that way you can watch the class for free. Then next up on YouTube, I put out my two color brioche infinity scarf here. So this one is a bit more advanced, modeled here by my sheep. <laughs> um, so if you're curious about that one, I'll link that video up above in the corner. And then also the sheep gets its own video as well. So that video will be linked up above as well. So now today I am back again to show you another brioche knitting video. So this one is going to be brioche mittens. So this one's definitely my most advanced brioche tutorial. And what these are is we actually start out at the bottom here just in plain ribbing. Then we introduce brioche into our work and work the thumb increases. We split the thumb stitches off and just continue working up through the rest of the mitten. Work our decreases and then a Kitchener stitch bind off. Then we come back and we pick up the thumb. Now, if you want to, you can just create two of the same mitten for your right and your left, or I created a specific one pattern that way, <laughs> all the increases line up and they look perfectly matching. So what you're gonna find in this video is first in the description box down below, you're gonna find each of the video breakpoints. That way, if you wanna fast forward or rewind to a specific part of the video, all those timestamps are down below. You're also going to find the link to the full written version of the pattern. So the pattern I'm showing you today is for a DK or light worsted weight. And I do plan on adding to this in the future and adding in a worsted weight version. So if you're curious about that one, be sure to check the link down below and I'll update that one once that one's available as well. Also, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down below. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. Let's get started. The materials you need for this project include one tapestry needle, one stitch marker, one piece of waste yarn, and then for the knitting needle, you want a 32 inch or longer circular knitting needle. The size I used for my project was a US 4 or 3.5 millimeter. The size of the knitting needle you use really will determine the size of your mitten. So if you want a larger mitten, you can always increase the knitting needle size because the brioche will be able to stretch even further. If you want a smaller, more fitted mitten, then you can use a smaller knitting needle size to really tighten up that brioche. And then you'll need one pair of scissors. In terms of the yardage, both the yarns I used are a DK weight or a light worsted. So first in the speckled purple colorway, that's the main color in my brioche in the top portion of the mitten. That colorway I used 95 yards or 87 meters. Then for the solid purple, which was the cuff and then the background of the brioche, that colorway I used 125 yards or 114 meters. So these are the two yarns I'm going to be using for my brioche. So first I have my high desert yarn and this one is a Knit Picks exclusive yarn. I'll be sure to link this one down below. This one is the lupine colorway and it's worsted weight. I have used this yarn before in my worsted weight mittens tutorial, so if you're curious about that one, I'll link it up here in the corner. With that yarn, I'm going to be using this Hedgehog Fibers Merino DK. So this yarn is 115 grams to 200 meters, and it's 100% merino wool. This one is the birthday cake colorway. And right now, I got this one at my local yarn shop, Loop Yarns. Right now at the time I'm posting this video, they're having 20% off their Hedgehog Fibers because it is a bit of a pricey yarn, so it's a bit of a splurge, but the colorways are gorgeous. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it down below. In terms of finding a comparable yarn, look for a DK or light worsted weight yarn that recommends somewhere between a US 6 or a US 7 knitting needle. As always, I'll have my gauge listed in the pattern down below so that you can ensure your knitting needle size and yarn weights match mine. So now let's get started. I'm gonna wind up this yarn and cast on. So this project is knit from the cuff up through the top of the mitten and down here on the cuff we're only using one color of the yarn. 
So the color I'm using is labeled in the pattern as color A. So in my mittens, that's this darker purple color here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast on a total of 40 stitches, then I'm gonna join in the round. And for the cast on, I recommend you use a stretchier cast on method. So something like the long tail cast on or the German twisted cast on. And if you aren't familiar with either of those, I'll be sure to link them up above. But again, I'm gonna cast on a total of 40 stitches. So now that I've cast on those 40 stitches, the next thing I want to do is I want to join in the round. So just real quick, I'm going to show you how magic loop works if you aren't familiar. If you already are familiar with joining in the round and working magic loop, then just skip ahead to the next portion of this video. All we're going to be doing in this portion is working a one by one rib for two inches in the round. But if you aren't familiar with magic loop, the first thing I want to do is I want to grab onto all my stitches and then I'm going to pull on my knitting needle point that the stitches are currently on. I'm going to pull that one over to the left so that all the stitches end up on the cord. Now I'm going to count into the center location. So there's my center location. And once I find that spot, I'm going to fold my knitting needle in half and stretch out those stitches so that they're divided now between the two halves of the cord. And now I'm going to pinch the cord and pull on it so that my stitches end up going up towards both of the knitting needle points. Now I'm going to turn my work to make it a little bit easier here. So I'm going to have my knitting needle points going over towards the right. I'm going to keep on sliding them all the way up towards the points. And now when I set up for magic loop, there's a couple things I want to make sure I have. So first I want to have my knitting needle points towards the right, which I currently already have. I want to have my working yarn coming out the knitting needle that's furthest away from me. So when we hold our knitting needles for magic loop, you can kind of think of them as I'm holding them on like a plane that's parallel to the table. So I have one that's closer to me, one that's further away from me, but they're both on the same level vertically. So I want the one that's further away from me, which is, should be this one, to have the working yarn coming out of it. So I just need to rotate mine right there. So now the one that's furthest away has the working yarn coming out of it. Now next up is I want to make sure all my cast on bumps are going down towards the table. So I'm just going to start basically where the working yarn is coming out and I'm just going to twist them down towards the table. And you want to make sure too in that inner corner that nothing looks twisted at all. So that looks great. All of them down towards the table. Okay, so now we're actually all set up. So we have our knitting needle points towards the right, working yarn coming out the knitting needle furthest away from us, all the bumps going down towards the table. So when we work our first round, the first thing you want to do is you want to know is the next stitch you're about to work or the first stitch on the next knitting needle going to be a knit stitch or a purl stitch. So we're working knit one, purl one ribbing. So this next stitch is going to be a knit stitch. So for that reason, I want my knitting or my yarn I'm about to work with, my working yarn, coming up in between the two knitting needles and then I'm just going to drape it over that back knitting needle. And that's how I want to start with my yarn when my first stitch is a knit stitch. If my first stitch is a purl stitch, I'm going to leave my yarn hanging down below in between the two knitting needles. And the reason we have to pay attention to how the yarn is laying there is so that you don't accidentally end up with a yarn over at the beginning of the round. So my first stitch is a knit stitch. So I'm taking my working yarn up in between the two knitting needles, draping it over that back knitting needle. Now to actually begin knitting, I'm going to take my back knitting needle point and I'm going to pull it towards the right. So now what happens there is those back stitches end up on the cord. And I make sure that I still have plenty of cord over here on the left hand side. You don't want to pull it so far that all the stitches basically take up this whole cord amount. You want to leave a loop of cord over here on the left. Now I can take this knitting needle point and I can just begin working right into those stitches that are still on my front knitting needle. So I want to make sure I'm working on here, not my tail. So now I'm just going to work knit one, bring my yarn in between the two to the front, purl one. And I'm going to work knit one, purl one, all the way across this front knitting needle. So I'm going to finish this side with my last purl one. 
And now when I finish, I'm just gonna drop the knitting needle that doesn't have any stitches on it. Now you can either thread back in this knitting needle while the knitting needle points are pointed over towards the left. But what I like to do is I like to turn my knitting needle so that the point with the work on it is now pointed towards the right. And I'm gonna thread back in my second knitting needle. So now again, when I look at my work, I have my knitting needle points going over towards the right. Half the stitches are on each knitting needle and my working yarn is coming out the knitting needle that's furthest away from me. So we just worked across those back stitches. Now to work one round in magic loop, you have to work across each half of the stitches. So first we worked across the first half, then we turn our work and now we're gonna work across the second half. Once we complete both knitting needles there, the first half and the second half, that's one round. So for this one again, the first stitch here for me is gonna be I just had a purl stitch here, so I'm gonna begin with a knit stitch. So I want my working yarn coming up in between the two knitting needles, draping over that back knitting needle. I'm gonna take my knitting needle that's furthest away from me or the one with the working yarn attached to it, pull it towards the right. Still have plenty of cord over here on the left-hand side. And now I'm gonna begin working the ribbing on this side. So I'm gonna work knit one, purl one across this knitting needle. Now that I finished going across this knitting needle, again, I'm gonna turn my work, thread back in my knitting needle, and now make sure that I'm set up again. So knitting needles towards the right, working yarn coming out the knitting needle that's furthest away from me, and my work coming down towards the table. So what I just showed you there where I went across one knitting needle, turned my work, and worked across the second knitting needle was one full round of magic loop. So now what I wanna do is I wanna continue this pattern round after round until this piece measures two inches. So I wanna measure from the bottom of my work to the bottom of my knitting needle. And when this distance is two inches of this one by one ribbing, then I'll come back and show you the next step where we begin to introduce in the brioche. So now I've finished the beginning cuff we can see I've worked up through here and I'm ready to introduce brioche into my work. So now before I begin the thumb increases, I need to work two full rounds in each colorway of brioche and then I can begin the in increases. So what I mean by all that is whenever I work brioche in the round with two colors, I first need to work it in my first colorway. So I'm gonna work the full round. So across the front knitting needle, turn my work, across the back knitting needle, in my first colorway, then I'm gonna work that full round in my second colorway. Once I completed both colorways, that basically makes up one set of stitches all the way around the knitting needle. So it's a little hard to explain, but I think you'll see exactly what I mean once I begin showing you the repeat. So when I begin working across, the colorway I'm gonna begin with is gonna be the one that you want to appear as your main colorway on the front of your mitten. So on the outside of my mitten, we can see I have kind of like this, kind of like a funfetti purple colorway as the main color. And then the purple color is my background color. Now, if I turn the mitten the other way, we can see that the purple color is the main color and the funfetti one is the background color. So you just need to decide which one you want to be the main colorway when you're looking at the front of your mitten. So again, I'm gonna use this funfetti purple colorway by Hedgehog Fibers as my main colorway. So when I begin working this round, let me just get about eight inches or so. So I'm just gonna start off with probably about 10 inches actually. And I'm just gonna thread that to the inside of my mitten. Okay, so now the way I like to start it out is I just like to lay that strand over my back knitting needle, just the way I usually would when my first stitch is a knit stitch. So I now have my new colorway coming up in between the two knitting needles, draped over my back knitting needle. Now, as I regularly do, I'm gonna take my back knitting needle and I'm gonna pull it towards the right and I'm gonna get ready to begin working across this front knitting needle. So now the repeat across this round in this first colorway is really pretty simple. So first, we're gonna knit one, yarn front, so I'm gonna bring my yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front, 
slip one purl wise. So when I say slip one purl wise, I just put my knitting needle into the base of that stitch as if to purl, but just pass it from my right to left knitting or left to right knitting needle there. So that was the whole repeat. So now again, we're gonna knit one, yarn front, slip one, and then do the repeat again. And you can see that when I do this knit one, because my yarn is in front, I'm creating a yarn over. So that is exactly what we want. We're bringing our yarn to the front so that we can create a yarn over right on top of that stitch that we're slipping. So now I'm gonna continue this repeat all the way across. Knit one, yarn front, slip one. Now this last stitch on the front knitting needle, if yours is also a purl stitch like mine, this one can be a little tricky because here again, we wanna bring our yarn to the front and slip that final stitch. Now we just need to make sure when we turn our work and begin the second half of this round that we end up getting a yarn over in front of that stitch. So I'm gonna leave my yarn exactly where it is, kind of like in front of my work right there. I'm gonna turn my knitting needles. So now when I turn my work, I'm not gonna move where this yarn is coming out of at all. And the reason for that is because when I knit this first stitch, I wanna make sure that I end creating that final yarn over there. So I'm gonna leave it exactly where it is. I'm just gonna pull my back knitting needle towards the right, go into that first stitch as if to knit, pick up my working yarn from behind all of the knitting needles and just use it to knit. So now I can see that I created that final yarn over back there, which is exactly what I wanted. So now I'm gonna continue the repeat here. So I just knit one. So I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front, slip one. And now for this last purl stitch that I have here, I'm just gonna bring my yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front, slip this final stitch, and then this one also needs that yarn over going over it. So here I'm just gonna take my working yarn, I'm gonna go up over, back behind, down below to the bottom to kind of create a yarn over there on that last stitch. Now again, I'm gonna turn my work. So now that I've worked that repeat across both of my knitting needles, I've worked that first round in the first colorway. Now I need to work that round in the second colorway. And the repeat with the second colorway is gonna be different. Okay, so when I begin the second colorway, I'm gonna have my second colorway coming out down below the two knitting needles here. I'm gonna pull my back knitting needle towards the right, and now I'm gonna slip the first stitch purl-wise. Now I'm gonna take my working yarn, and I'm gonna wrap it up above, back behind, down below to the bottom to create a yarn over over that stitch I just slipped. Then I'm gonna work a brioche purl. So a brioche purl is where I purl the stitch and that previous yarn over together. So that was the full repeat there. So here I'm gonna slip the first stitch and that was a full repeat right there. So to show it again, I'm gonna slip the next stitch purlwise. My yarns are already in front. I'm gonna do a full yarn over and now I'm gonna work a brioche purl. Slip one, yarn over, brioche purl. And I'm gonna work this all the way across both of the knitting needles. At the end, I'm gonna work that brioche purl, and then I'm gonna turn my work to work the second knitting needle. So on this side, again, I'm gonna leave my working yarn exactly where it's coming out of. Slip the first stitch purlwise, yarn over, brioche purl, all the way across this knitting needle. So when I get over here, this final stitch, so this was the location where I couldn't really get that full yarn over on that final stitch because this work, this previous working yarn wasn't really tied down anywhere. So what I do here is I'm just gonna hold this previous color working yarn up over the knitting needle 
And then I'm gonna go put my knitting needle into both of them, wrap my yarn around, and then pull through. That way I've caught that previous yarn over into that brioche pearl. So to show that one more time, this final stitch is really the trickiest one of the round, I think. Because a lot of times this last yarn over, it might not have been caught anywhere. So here, I just hold that other colorway up over my knitting needle, put it into the base of that final purl stitch there, and then purl through that yarn over and the purl stitch. So now that I've worked that setup round in each colorway, I fully introduced brioche into my work. So now that I've worked the setup round, I can now show you the repeat round. And this repeat round, you're gonna see a few times in the mitten. So first you're just gonna see it one more time down here at the base. Then we're gonna work our increases. And then we're gonna be working these repeat rounds all the way up through the center portion of the mitten as well. So you're gonna be working this repeat row in both colorways quite a few times. So when I work the repeat round, first I'm gonna work it in my first colorway. So again, this is the kind of like fun fetty purple colorway here. So when I begin, I'm gonna take my working yarn in that colorway and I'm gonna bring it up in between my two knitting needles and drape it over my back knitting needle. I'm gonna pull my back knitting needle to the right and here I'm gonna work what's called a brioche knit. So on that previous round, in this colorway, we worked a brioche purl, which is where we purled the yarn over and the stitch together. Here, we're gonna knit the yarn over and the stitch together. So we can see I have a yarn over on top of a knit stitch, so I'm just gonna put my knitting needle into both of those and knit them together. So that's a brioche knit. Now I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front, slip the next stitch, and that's the full repeat right there. So I'm gonna work a brioche knit. So I'm gonna work the stitch and the yarn over together. Yarn front, slip one purlwise. And now this time, you can see when I'm working the brioche knit, that because I had the yarn in the front, I'm creating another yarn over now on top of that purl stitch that I'm slipping. Now at the end of this first knitting needle, just like in that setup round with this colorway, we need to bring our yarn to the front and slip that final purl stitch. Now when we turn our work to be in the second half of the stitches, we wanna leave our working yarn coming out just where it's coming out right now. So that way when we bring it up to brioche knit those first two, we create that last yarn over over there. So again, bring it up behind and work that first brioche knit on this side, yarn front, slip one. And then we're just gonna work the repeat all the way across this side. Now for the last one, again, I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front, slip it, and then do a full yarn over there. So that was the first colorway. And now when we work the repeat round in the second colorway, it's actually the exact same thing as how we worked this colorway in the setup round. So we're gonna begin with our working yarn in this colorway coming down below in between the two knitting needles. Slip the first stitch purlwise, full yarn over, brioche purl. Slip one purlwise, full yarn over, brioche purl. All the way across this round. Turn our work and work it all the way across the back knitting needle as well. So next up, we're gonna be working the increases. So for this pattern, there is a right and a left mitten pattern. And the reason for that is that the front and the back of these mittens aren't identical. So you can see the back side here, or what I'm calling the back side. You can really make either side the front or the back. Um, on the back side though, it's really all just, the stitches look vertical. 
Whereas on the front side, we can see I have this one column of knit stitches, and then from this column is where I'm working all of those increases for the thumb. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you this left mitten right here, which is the one shown exactly here. And then in the pattern below, there's also instructions for how to work the right mitten. You just work the thumb increases in a different location. So to work this mitten, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work an increase round. So when we work the increase rounds, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna increase in our first colorway. So you always wanna increase in the colorway that you have your main colorway when you're looking at the front side of your mitten. So for me, it's this Funfetti purple. And then we're just gonna work that increase round just regularly in the second colorway. So let me show that to you here. So to begin this round, first I'm gonna take my working yarn up in between my two knitting needles, drape it over my back knitting needle. And I'm just gonna work a brioche knit, yarn front, slip one purl wise. So that's just the regular repeat that we have in this colorway. Now next up, this is the stitch that I'm gonna work my increase into. So here, first, I'm gonna work a regular brioche knit. So I'm gonna go into both the stitch and the yarn over together, wrap my yarn around, and pull that through. Now I don't wanna slide this off my left knitting needle yet. Next up, I'm gonna work a yarn over. So I'm gonna take my yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front of my work, and then just bring it back to the back again. And now I'm gonna work another brioche knit into the same stitch. Now I can slide it off my left knitting needle. So we can see how we turn that one brioche knit into three new stitches. So let me show that to you again. So first here, I'm still starting out with my yarn in front because I need to do that yarn over on top of this stitch here. And first up, I'm gonna work a brioche knit, but I'm not gonna slide this stitch off my left knitting needle. Instead, I'm gonna work a yarn over. So I'm gonna bring my working yarn in between the two knitting needles, hold it in the back again. And now I'm gonna work another brioche knit into those two loops. Now that I've done that, I can slide it off my left knitting needle. So now you can see those three stitches that came out of that one brioche knit. Now I like to place my stitch marker just so I remember that before that stitch is where I'm gonna be working all my increases. So now next up, I'm just gonna work the regular repeat across the rest of the round. But I kind of start midway through a repeat. So first, I'm just gonna make sure I bring my yarn to the front. I'm gonna slip one purlwise, and now I can begin the regular repeat. So I'm gonna work a brioche knit, yarn front, slip one purlwise. Repeat again, brioche knit, yarn front, slip one purl wise. All the way across this full round, so I'm gonna go all the way across the front knitting needle, turn my work all the way across the back knitting needle. The increase round in the second colorway is worked really similarly to how it's typically worked. So again, I start out with my yarn down below the center. I slip the first stitch purl wise, full yarn over, brioche purl. Now for this increase stitch, this is where it gets a little different. So again, I still wanna slip the next stitch purl wise, do a full yarn over. Now I'm gonna purl one, so I'm gonna purl that center one of the increase. Slip one stitch, yarn over. So what we did to that increase is first, we slipped the first stitch of the increase and did a yarn over. We purled the second stitch of that increase. And then the third stitch we slipped and did a yarn over. So we basically just incorporated those three stitches right into our pattern. Now I'm gonna pass the stitch marker. And now across the rest of this round, the repeat's gonna be the same. So here we're mid repeat. So I'm gonna work a brioche purl. And now we can start the repeat. So slip one. Yarn over, brioche purl. 
And I'm just gonna work this all the way across both knitting needles. So that was an example of one increase round where first we increased in our first colorway, then we just worked the round in pattern in our second colorway. After each increase round, we work a total of two sets of repeats. So we work a round in our first colorway, second colorway, then another round, first colorway, second colorway. Then after that, we're gonna work another increase round and so on and so forth until we get all the way up to the number of thumb stitches we want before our stitch marker. Once I get to that location, I'm gonna come back and show you how to place our thumb stitches onto the waist yarn and rejoin in the round. Now when I count across to before my stitch marker, I have a total of 13 stitches. And when I count, I count basically the whole brioche knit as one stitch. So that stitch and the yarn over is one, two, three, four, five, and so on across. And before the stitch marker, total of 13. So now I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and thread it with my piece of waist yarn. And now I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna slide the first 12 stitches. So I'm gonna leave this final stitch on the knitting needle, slide the first 12 stitches onto my tapestry needle and onto my waist yarn. And when I slide them off, I wanna make sure I'm catching both the yarn over and the stitch below it. Just the purl stitch there. Here I have a full brioche knit. And I'm sliding them each purl wise, so I'm not twisting them at all. Okay, there's the 12. I'm gonna take off my tapestry needle now, and I just like to tuck these two pieces of waist yarn now into the inside of my mittens so that they kind of get out of the way a little bit. Now I'm gonna rejoin in the round. So all I wanna do is I wanna take my two knitting needles and just pinch them together. And now I'm just gonna continue working in the round, those repeat rows over and over again until my mitten reaches the length that I'd like. So for my size, I continued working in the brioche until from basically the top of the cuff up until where my decreases begin, it is six inches right in there. And on your hand, if you wanna measure it, you just wanna leave a little bit of room at the top for those decreases and then measure from the bottom of your palm and see how long you need yours. So I went for six inches. So now I'm gonna continue working the two repeat rounds over and over again, join right in the round, and I'm gonna take off this stitch marker because I don't need that one anymore. So now I've continued working all the way up to where I'm ready to begin the decreases at the top of the mitten. And the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure I have an equal number of stitches on each knitting needle. So right now, because I took the two stitches out for the thumb, I have less stitches on the one closest to me and more stitches on the one furthest away from me. So all that I need to do is I need to slide one stitch. So in this case, it's gonna be the stitch and the yarn over from my back knitting needle to the front one. So to do that, I'm gonna find the one stitch. And in this case, again, it is the yarn over and the stitch together. I'm gonna find the cord right after that. And then I'm just gonna pull on the cord to move that stitch from one half to the other half there. So now if I count across, I should have an equal number on each side, which in the case of our size that we're working here is 19 stitches. Now, when I work this round, what I'm gonna do is at the beginning of the round, I'm gonna work a left leaning decrease, then I'm gonna work a right leaning decrease on the other side, turn my work, and then again do a left leaning decrease and a right leaning decrease. So when I work this round, the first thing I wanna note is that I'm always working the decrease rounds in my main colorway. So for me, that's this yarn right here. You don't wanna work it in your background colorway. So to begin this round, I'm gonna work a left leaning decrease. The way this works is first, I'm gonna slip the next stitch in the yarn over, so this whole brioche knit here, I'm just gonna slip it as if to knit it. So I need to twist both of those. Then I'm gonna knit these three stitches together. So I have one stitch, the yarn over, and then the next stitch 
gonna put my right knitting needle into all of them as if to knit, wrap my yarn around, pull through. And now I'm gonna take that previous stitch that I slipped, both halves of it, so the yarn over and the stitch, and I'm gonna pass it up, over, and off. So now we turned all those stitches down into just the one. So that is a left-leaning decrease. Now I need to work over to where I'm gonna begin my right-leaning decrease. So I wanna work my right-leaning decrease on, if we just look at this first half of the stitches, I wanna work it on the last one that's in the main colorway and the second to last one that's in the main colorway. So I'm gonna stop just before those stitches right there. And I'm just gonna work the pattern across the regular brioche pattern. So yarn front, slip one, brioche knit, until three stitches remain. So now I'm over here at the other end, and when I say three stitches remaining, basically what I mean is I wanna have one brioche knit here, so the stitch and the yarn over, then the purl stitch, and then another brioche knit. So those are my three stitches remaining. So right now I already have my yarn in the front from when I did yarn front, slip one. So now next up for the right leaning decrease, I'm gonna slip this brioche stitch as if to knit. So I'm just twisting both of the stitches without working them. Then I'm gonna knit this purl stitch. Now I'm gonna slip this brioche stitch. That's kind of one back right here that I just slipped previously. I'm gonna put my knitting needle into the base of both of the halves. And I'm gonna slide that one up, over, and off that stitch I just knit. Now I'm gonna pass this stitch from my right to left knitting needle. And now I just need to take these two stitches over here, this brioche knit, and slide those up, over, and off of that knit stitch. So there's a lot of slipping that happens in that decrease, but basically we just took the brioche knits on either side and the purl stitch in the middle and turned them into one, just one stitch right there. So now I just pass this stitch over to my right knitting needle. Turn my work. And again on this side, I'll show each one of them. Now when I start on this side, I'm gonna start off with a yarn front slip one. So when I slip the first stitch, I can check to make sure that I'm gonna have a yarn front because when I pick up my yarn, it's gonna come in front of that knitting needle, so that's perfect. And now that I've taken care of that first stitch, I'm ready to begin my left leaning decrease on this side. So first, I'm gonna slip the yarn over and the stitch as if to knit. Now I'm gonna knit all three of these loops together. And now I'm gonna pass the previous slipped brioche stitch, stitch <laughs> up, over, and off. So now we turned those three stitches into just the one. Now again, I'm gonna do yarn front, slip one, brioche knit, all the way across the center portion here. So before I get to these final two brioche knits over here, I'm gonna do yarn front, slip one. So now I'm ready to do the right leaning decrease. So again here, I'm gonna slip the first brioche knit as if to knit, but don't actually knit it. I'm gonna knit one stitch. Now I'm gonna pass the slipped brioche stitch up over and off the stitch I knit. I'm gonna slip that stitch that's knit over to my left knitting needle. And now I'm gonna slip the next brioche stitch on this knitting needle up, over, and off that knit stitch. So now again, you basically just end up with that center knit stitch and you slipped everything off of it. Now to finish up this round, I just need to do yarn front, slip one. So that is a decrease round where I show you the left and the right decreases that we work. So after we do each one of the brioche decrease rounds, the next thing we do is we just work the round standard in the background colorway. So just the typical yarn front, slip one, brioche purl all the way around. Then we're gonna work a standard row where we just work it in the regular colorway and then we work it in the background colorway. And then we're ready to do another decrease round and so on and so forth, all the way up through this top portion of the mitten. 
Once we finished all our decreases, then I'm gonna come back and show you how to work the Kitchener stitch at the top of the mitten. All the decrease rounds and how many to alternate in between is all listed in the pattern down below. Then the last thing I'm gonna come back and show you is gonna be how to come back and pick up the thumb stitches and work up through the thumb. Now that I'm back at the beginning of the round and I'm ready to cast off, I'm gonna cut my yarns. So I don't need that much of the background color, so I'm just gonna leave about eight inches of that one. But I am gonna be doing the Kitchener stitch with my main colorway, so that one I'm gonna do a little bit longer, probably about 12 to 16 inches. I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle with my main colorway. And I found it's easier too if I just tuck my background colorway, the tail for it, just right into the mitten. That way it stays out of the way. So now across this top edge, what I'm gonna do is the Kitchener stitch. And the trick here is that you just wanna keep any of the brioche knits together and just work them as one stitch. So for example, the Kitchener stitch starts with a two stitch setup. So first I'm gonna take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front knitting needle as if to purl. So I'm just gonna go through both that stitch and its yarn over. Pull my yarn through, but don't slide it off. Now I'm gonna go through the first stitch on the back knitting needle as if to knit. Pull through, but don't slide it off. So that's the setup. And now we have the repeat. So first, tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front knitting needle, knit wise. Again, I went through the stitch and the yarn over there. Now I'm gonna slide it off. Now I'm gonna go through the new first stitch on my front knitting needle. This one's only one loop there because it's just a purl stitch. As if to purl, leave it on. I'm gonna go through the first stitch on my back knitting needle as if to purl. Slide that one off and go through the new first stitch on my back knitting needle as if to knit. So this one has a yarn over with it, so I'm gonna go through both of them. Leave it on the knitting needle. So it's essentially exactly the same as the regular Kitchener stitch. So you're just treating the brioche knits just as one regular knit stitch and sliding the tapestry needle through both the loops at the same time. So now I'm gonna continue going all the way across this top edge and I will put the Kitchener stitch repeat up on the screen here. Now whenever I begin the thumb, the first thing I do is I just lay them in down and I make sure the thumb is over here on the left hand side. Now I'm going to find this piece of waist yarn that it's whole, being held on. And I'm going to take one of my knitting needle points and I'm going to go from right to left and pick up these first stitches across the front. Now the trick here is you want to make sure that you follow the waist yarn that'll help make sure that you don't miss any of the yarn overs. So for instance here, the green yarn first goes underneath this purple bar, then through this light purple loop. So I'm gonna pick those up first. Then it goes back here underneath this single loop. So now I can check as I go along. So this is the yarn over on top of a knit stitch. This is a brioche knit and then I have a purl. So next up I need another brioche knit and that's what I'm gonna be paying attention to as I go along and I pick up each one of these stitches to make sure to kind of double verify that I'm not missing anything. And as I go, I am gonna pull out the waist yarn just to make it a little bit easier to see. So now that I've picked up those six stitches, or now that I've picked up those three sets of brioche knit purl, brioche knit purl, brioche knit purl, I'm gonna take my knitting needle, pull it all the way over towards the left, just so this one ends up on the cord pretty close to the next knitting needle point. 
And I'm gonna turn my work. So now the thumb is over towards the right. And I'm gonna go again from right to left, picking up each one. So I just finished with a pearl. So next up I need to pick up a brioche knit. And the last stitch is always the hardest to find, so I just kind of pull on my waist yarn until I find that last pearl bump there. Okay, and now I have all my stitches. So I'm gonna turn it again, so that my thumb is over towards the light, the left, and my two knitting needle points are going towards the right. And now when I rejoin my yarn to begin working this round, I'm gonna rejoin with my main colorway here. So my speckled one. I'm gonna take about eight inches and then thread it to the inside of my mitten. And now I'm just gonna begin working this round just in the regular brioche repeat. So here, first I'm gonna work a brioche knit, yarn front, slip one purlwise, brioche knit, yarn front, slip one purlwise all the way across this knitting needle, turn my work and go all the way across the back knitting needle. Now I found it's really difficult to pick up stitches and then incorporate those picked up stitches into the brioche. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this gap here. And then once I'm all done completing knitting the thumb, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna use my yarn tails to close up this gap that forms in this inner corner. Next up, I need to join my second colorway. This one's my background colorway. And again, I'm just gonna take about eight inches or so and thread it to the inside. Now again, this round is just yarn front, slip one, yarn over, brioche pearl, slip one, yarn over, brioche pearl, all the way across. So now I'm gonna continue repeating in each colorway over and over again, all the way up until my thumb measures two inches. Then I'm gonna work a decrease round as described in the pattern. Lastly, cut my yarn and weave the cut yarn through my remaining stitches. And that's all there is to the thumb. So when it comes to making the right or left mitten, the main difference is just gonna be where the increases happen for the thumb. As I just showed you before, for the left mitten, the thumb increases happen at the beginning of the round. Now for the right mitten, the thumb increases are gonna happen halfway through the round, just before we turn our work to begin the other side. So let me show you those increases right here. So I just wanted to show you real quick what the thumb increases look like and what placing the thumb stitches on waist yarn looks like for the right mitten. So here I've already worked all my increase stitches and all these increases came out of the last brioche knit that was on the front side of my work. So this is the first knitting needle I go across, then I turn my work and go across the back knitting needle. So here, first to place the thumb stitches on waist yarn, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna work all the way across up until the stitch marker. Now I'm gonna take off my stitch marker and I'm still gonna work the next stitch. So the next stitch right off of the stitch marker is a brioche knit. So now I'm gonna place these 11 stitches that are remaining on this front knitting needle onto a piece of waist yarn using my tapestry needle. And again, as I'm going across, I wanna make sure I'm picking up both the stitch and the yarn overs on top of it. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna thread that onto the waste yarn. I'm not gonna take my tapestry needle off yet because I still need that. Now I'm gonna thread back in my second knitting needle, still while they're pointed over here towards the left. Turn my work, and I'm gonna slide my first stitch from my back knitting needle also onto the piece of waste yarn. So here it's a brioche knit, so you wanna make sure you get the stitch and the yarn over onto the piece of waste yarn. Now I can take off my tapestry needle and just tie this piece of waste yarn to the side. I now have a total of 12 stitches, not counting the yarn overs, on my thumb for this mitten. I'm gonna tuck that to the inside. And now I can just join in the round and keep on working round after round of the center portion of the mitten. And I should have exactly 19 stitches on either knitting needle here. No need to rearrange any other stitches. So now the last step that I have to do here on my mitten is I have to close up this hole that forms in the inner corner of the thumb. So you can see that if I were to try this on right now, <laughs> how large that hole is. So it's really quite substantial. So how I'm gonna close this up is I'm gonna use the two tails from when we join the yarn for the thumb. So to do this, I kind of place my mitten down so that the thumb is towards me and the top part of the mitten is further away. And just that the opening's right there on top. Now I like to start with my main colorway or the one that's kind of in the front for the mitten. I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle. And what I try to do is I'm gonna go through this opening and I'm just gonna try and blend this thread in the background. So it starts here and I'm gonna try and pick up something over here, over here and back over here. Then tighten it to close up this opening. So first, if I look on the inside here, I'm just gonna try and pick up something that mimics right where that strand is. So that looks like a great spot right there. Now I'm gonna go across and underneath these purple. I'm gonna come back down here to this corner. I'm gonna come up in the center of one of these knit stitches so it's a little easier to blend it in. Now as I'm going, I'm pulling to tighten it. Thread it back down into the inside of the mitten. Okay, so now when I tighten just that one, you can see that the gap is already starting to close up there. So that looks great. So I think that's just about as much as I'm gonna use this one to weave in. So now I'm gonna let go of this strand I'm gonna pick up the purple one, my solid background color. So now here again, I wanna try and do the same thing where I just kind of blend this into the background. Okay, so now I've woven in both of those ends. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring them both to the inside of the mitten and then secure them and just weave them in. So now I've finished weaving in those ends in that inner corner. And you can see that I've kind of achieved my mission pretty well of hiding the fact that we were closing up a hole there. You can see the hole a little bit there. So if I wanted to, I could keep on weaving back and forth to tighten that up even more. But that's all there is to it. Now that my tails are on the inside, of my mitten, I'm just gonna weave them in the same way I typically do with the rest of my ends. There really isn't any sort of science or perfect way to weave in this. I just try to hide the two ends as best as I can while closing up that gap. So that's all there is to knitting these mittens. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. I'll see you next time.